Hello everyone and welcome to STM32 microcontroller tutorial number 2. In this tutorial we explain how to write and upload the code that will blink internal LED in Nucleo 64 board. That is, we will write a code that will blink this LED over here. Blinking an LED is a hello world example for coding the STM32 microcontrollers. In these tutorials we are using a Nucleo 64 board and you can see over here the board number. However, everything explained in this tutorial applies to any other Nucleo board and with slight modifications that we will explain later on in this tutorial, everything that you will learn in this video tutorial applies to other types of STM32 microcontroller boards. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 500 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. The first step is to start the Cube IDE development environment that's used for coding the STM32 microcontrollers. So click on start over here and search for STM32. And by clicking here, you will start the development environment. Then click on file, click on new and click on STM32 project. The next step is to select your board. Consequently, click on board selector. And over here, you can either search for commercial part number if you know it, or you can search for the type of the board. To narrow down the search, I will type Nucleo 64. And over here, you can select the option. I will press this option. And over here, you need to locate your board. Let's expand this window such that we can see the numbers. Every Nucleo board has these several numbers and letters next to it. So locate on your board, on the top of the board, the corresponding number. In my case, the number is F446RE. So I will locate this number. And here it is. Double check F446RE and click on next. Then let's give to our project a name. I will call it hello world one. And over here, you need to select the targeted language. In this video tutorial, we explain how to write the code in C and keep all the other options as their defaults and click on finish. And here, it's very important that you press yes. By pressing yes, you will basically automatically initialize or all peripherals with their default mode and you will not need to assign certain pin to a certain port so everything will be already completed for you so click on yes and after some time you will actually see this important window since all the peripherals were initialized with their default mode we will not change anything over here. That is, we will not play with pinout and configuration. In our future tutorials, we will explain how to change the pinout and configuration. Next, let's explain the directory structure. Double click on core and expand. You will see this include folder and you will see main.h and you will see these two header files. Double click on the main. This is our main file. If you're familiar with C, this is the standard C main file. We will enter the code in this file later on in this video tutorial. Next, we have this important folder called includes. This folder is for the source files that will be included by the compiler. Then we have this folder called drivers. This is the folder for drivers. 
The folder core is the Eclipse folder that contains all the generated files, including, as I explained previously, our main file. To be able to write a code for blinking the LED, we first need to find the board schematics. So open Google and search Nucleo 64 and enter the board number. In my case, the board number is F446RE. Then click over here and search for documentation. Click over here. Over here, you can find all the user manuals. Under the user manual, find this file. Open this file. This is the user manual for our board. Find the page 13. In your case, if you're using some other type of the board, the page number might be different. And here it is. You should study this graph and the text explaining this graph in order to get yourself familiar with the board. To code the board, we need an additional file. So again, Google and search for this file, MB1136 schematics. And you can click over here. This document is very important since it contains CAD drawing of all the connections. Scroll down to the page number 5 and zoom this part. This is a symbol for internal LED. This LED is denoted by LD2. Now, go back to the first file and look at the schematics. Try to locate this LED. It is located over here on your board. And you can see that it's a green LED. Now, go back to the CAD schematics and try to understand these schematics. We can see that LD2 is actually connected to PA5. PA5 is actually a pin. Pins are grouped in ports. Ports are usually denoted by GPIO with a letter. In the general case, GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. When coding, you will often see variables and type definitions containing GPIOA or GPIOB. Here, GPIOA denotes the GPIOA port and GPIOB denotes the GPIOB port. Going back to the CAD schematics, you will notice that the pins are denoted by PA5, PA6, or PB3 or PB5. It's very important to properly understand this notation. PA5 means the following. This is the pin at the port GPIOA with the number 5. Or we can say that PA5 is connected to the GPIO port A bit 5. Similarly, PB3 means that this pin is connected to the GPIO port B with the pin number 3. From this schematics, we can see that if we want to turn on this LED, we need to send high voltage to PA5 pin. Similarly, to turn off this LED, we need to send zero or low voltage to PA5. After understanding the board schematics, we are ready to write the code for blinking the LED. The first step is to locate our main.c file. To find the main.c file, you need to expand this core folder and you need to expand the source folder. Here it is. Double click on main.c. Click on yes. Here is our main file. Next, you need to locate the while loop. So scroll all the way down, and here you have int main, go down, go down, and here's our while loop. Over here, we will add our C code. Over here, I will add my code. Here it is. And let's explain this code line by line. We use the HAL or HAL library to code the STM32 microcontrollers. 
To send a high or a low voltage to a specific pin, we use this function called HAL GPIO write pin. The first input argument of this function is the name of the port. In our case, it's GPIO8. Then, the second input argument is the name of the pin. The pin name is GPIO pin 5. And over here, we are specifying that we are sending a high voltage. High voltage corresponds to binary 1. Let's summarize everything again. We want to send a high or a low voltage to this pin, PA5. This is because this pin is directly connected to our LED. PA5 actually stands for the pin connected to the GPIO A and the pin number is 5. Then here we will specify the port name GPIO A and the pin number. And finally we will specify the value of voltage, high or low. After that we delay our code for one second. We delay the code by specifying the delay time in milliseconds. Then over here we write zero to our pin. And finally we delay our code for thousand milliseconds. That is for one second. And that's it. And this while loop will repeat itself. Next, connect your board to the computer by using the USB port. However, before we can actually upload the code to our board, it's very important to upgrade and to upload the newest version of ST-Link firmware. To do that, click on Help and over here click on ST-Link Upgrade. Then click here on Open in Update Mode and over here click on Upgrade and wait for the process to complete. Now you can safely close this window and let's build a project. Click on Project and click on Build Project. OK. Next. To upload the code, that is to run everything, you need to click on this symbol over here. So click over here and use the default options. Click on OK. And wait for a second. Download verified successfully, shutting down exit. Now you will notice that the LED on your board is actually blinking. Let's change the code a little bit. Go back to the main file and over here, let's for example keep one over here, however let's comment this part. What will happen now? The LED will continuously stay on. Save this file, then again click on project Click on Build Project and again click on this symbol over here to run. And after some time you will see that the code is downloaded to our board and the LED will be continuously on. Before I conclude this video tutorial, I would like to explain a few important things. First of all, let's analyze this name. Obviously, this is a type definition for something. So how to find the declaration of this name? Well, you can easily do that by do the right click and over here you need to find the proper option. You can search and you can find this option open declaration. So let's open this one, click on yes. Click on Cancel, and here it is. Here is the definition. Another important file that you can analyze is the main.h file. So click on INC and open the main.h. This file contains these important definitions. These definitions are very interesting because of the following. Over here, you can see that instead of GPIO pin 5, we can simply type LD2 pin. So let's do that. I will copy 
this name over here and I will go to my while loop and I will simply paste over here. Okay, now you can see that instead of GPIO A, we can actually type this, LD2 GPIO port. Okay, so let's run the code again. First project, build. And then upload the code. And you can see that LED is turned on. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.